Hello and welcome to another acrylic or tutorial. Before we move on, I'd like to thank our patrons and Derivative for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. And for more, you can check out our Patreon with different tiers to offer all touch designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I'll leave the link in the description. Now back to the tutorial. Make sure to watch until the end, there's going to be many tips and tricks which you can also use for your future projects. Let's start by adding a grid sop. Then we'll follow with a basic rendering setup consisting of a geometry, a camera comp, a light comp and a render top. To get a black background, let's attach an RGB key followed by an alt top. Turn on the display flag on the null top and I'll split the screen and set the second screen to top viewer. Then let's right click on the left screen and under display we'll toggle off the backdrop tops. Great, now let's press tab and attach a round top. In the parameter window we'll set the type to circular and extend left to mirror. Right click after the ramp and we'll attach a blur. This will smooth things out later when we attach the vertex displacement. Then let's right click after the blur to add a null top and after the null top we'll attach a normal map top. A normal map top takes the input image and creates a normal map by finding edges in the image. We'll use the null top and the normal map top for bump mapping once we add a fong material. So let's go ahead and add a fong material. From here we drag the normal top and drop it onto the normal map parameter of the material. This will simulate bumps or wrinkles on the surface of the grid to give it a 3D depth effect. Let's enable the height map, we'll drag and drop the null top to the height map of the material and we'll also enable the displace vertices parameter. We already noticed the displacement here on the geo node, but the texture is missing, so we'll also drag and drop the null top onto the color map parameter, and this will give us the vertex displacement we wanted. From here we can increase the quality and smooth it out by increasing the pre-shrink and the filter size parameter of the blur top. Then let's go back to the beginning of the network and we'll insert an attribute create sop after the grid. This will allow us to add tangents to our geometry as soon as we enable these in the parameter window. Then back to the grid, we'll increase the number of rows and columns to 100. This is as smooth as we want it for now, since we will also be doing the instancing. So for the instancing itself, let's create another grid, only with 20 by 20, followed by an all sop. For clarity, I'll rename this null to pause for position and color it red. Then we go to the geoparameter window, open the instance tab and toggle on the instancing. Then we drag and drop the position all onto the translate top of the geo and we set translate x to p0, translate y to p1 and translate z to p2. We'll not see here any changes at first and this is because the grid size is set to 1. So let's change both these values to 19. From here let's set the second screen to geometry viewer for a second to see where the camera is located. What we're going to do here is just zoom out so that we have the whole grid in view without actually moving the camera position. We'll see why I did this in a minute. Now, to get the effect we want, we're going to animate the face of the ramp over time. So let's type in abs time, that second, and this value will keep increasing over time. We also want to animate the periods to get this effect, but in here we don't want the value to keep growing, but rather move from a minimum of 0.3 to a maximum of 1. To set this segment, let's first create an LFO chop followed by a math and a null chop. In the parameter window of the map, let's open the range tab and we'll change the from range minus 1 to 1 to the 2 range we want, which is 0.3 to 1. Back to the LFO, let's change the frequency to 0.1 and then we'll put the null viewer active and we'll drag and drop this value to animate the period of the ramp. So now let's see how this actually looks from our camera position when we change the screen mode to top viewer. We see here that we are actually really close with the camera. 
To change the camera view here, there is a convenient and cool trick I want to show you. To do this, we first go back to the geometry viewer mode like we did before, and we have this parameter here on the top bar, save view 2. And if we set this to cam 1 and go back to top viewer, this will give us a new view of the grid without having to manually change the distance of the camera. Here, if you notice that designer slowing down, just select all the nodes and turn off the viewers to increase the performance. Great, so now we just need to make this pretty. Let's introduce some color with a look up top. In the second input, let's attach a noise top. Open the parameter window and here you can experiment with the values. What I did is I turned the harmonics all the way down to zero and I toggled off the monochrome parameter. Open the transform tab and set the scale to 0.1. Then back to the noise tab and increase the amplitude to around 1.6 and the seed to whichever value you like. Here you might notice some part of the grid might be more colored than the rest and this is caused by the reflection of the light. If you don't want this, just move the position of the light or try to add other light comps. Let's right click after the lookup top and we'll attach an edge top, which will make everything black and white first. But if we go to the parameter window and enable comp over input, this will give us back the color and create some white edge. But you can set this to be any color. And here you can also experiment with the strength and the sample step. Another operator we could attach here to spice things up could be the lens distort and this will distort the whole image if you change the parameters. So feel free to try this out and see how you like it. And this was it for this short tutorial. Thank you so much for watching until the end, please subscribe to the channel, that will help us a lot. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time, bye!